So finally, we completed our login process and we have got the access token. Now we will move to our next part that is automating this entire thing. So let me just quickly revise what were things we have done. So first I showed you how you can make an app on the FIRES website. Once you have made an app, you will get three things. One is the client ID, one is the secret key and redirect URI. So these are the three things that you will be getting. Uh, so we will be using these two things. Then I made the session. I used the session model class and I made a session and I got this URL. Now this is the URL that we need to authenticate ourselves. So we just have to click on this URL, go to the website, write our username, then write the six digit TOTP, then write the four digit men. After doing everything, you will be redirected to google.com. So from that website, you have to uh, copy the URL that is google.com slash something, something. And at the end, you will be having auth code equal to your auth code. Once you've got the auth, auth code, I saved it in a variable. And then I finally generated my access token. And this is how the access token looks like. All right, so this, these are all the things that we have done previously. Now we will move to the next step that is automating this entire thing. So I've made a .py file. So the purpose is I'll run this file and this file will automatically generate the access token for me. So first step is I'll just copy paste the, UR, the library that I'm using. So these are the two libraries that I'm using. So I'll just copy paste it here. After that, I'll just copy paste the three things that is client ID, secret key and redirect URI. After that, I'll make the response. Okay. So I'll just write and call the session model class and I'll make a session object. After calling the generate auth code method, it is going to give me a response. Now in this response, I have the unique link okay, that entire URL that I have on which I have to go and verify myself. Now this is where the fun begins. Okay. Now I need to automate this entire process. So for that, I will be using the Selenium library. So uh, before moving to the Selenium library, I need a few things. That is first, I need the username. Then I need the TOTP, okay, six digit, then the four pin. So I've made a few variable like username in which I have stored my username, then the TOTP. Now in this TOTP, you have to write the code that you might have received when you activated your two-factor authentication. So that code, you have to paste it here. Then the four pins that I have. So right now I have, you know, randomly uh, written something. So I'll change this later when I will be running the code. The next step is importing the uh, Py OTP library and the Selenium library. So Selenium library will be used to automate the entire process. Okay. Now before writing the code, there are a few things that you need to have. First is you need to install the Selenium library. How to install it? You just need to go to the terminal and you can just type here, you know, pip install uh, Selenium. This is going to install the Selenium library for you. The second is this TOTP library. Now, what is this TOTP library? Now, if you have noticed, whenever uh, you want to add the TOTP, your in your authenticator app in your mobile phone, automatically after a few seconds, a new code is generated. The same thing is done by this library. Whenever you call this library, so this library will also fetch you the same six-digit code that your mobile app is generating. So that is why we are using this PyOTP library. All right. So for that also, you just have to write pip install PyOTP. It will install the library. So these are the two things you have to install. The next thing is you need the Chrome driver. Now, since you're automating the entire process, you need to get the Chrome driver. So you just go to google.com. Okay. You can open the Chrome browser. First check what version of Chrome you are using. So in this case, I just, you know, I've gone to the setting and I've, I've clicked on about Chrome and I can see that my version is 1.106.0 something. So this is my Chrome version. So the same version Chrome driver I need to download. So I'll go to their website, this website. And from here, I'll click on this 106. And from here, I'll just download whatever uh, version suits me. That is this one. So I've just downloaded it. And after downloading it, downloading it, I just extracted it here. So this is the file that I need if I want to automate the entire process. So these are all the things you need to do before proceeding ahead. After doing this, I'll make a function. Okay, now this function, the moment I call this function, this function will automatically generate the auth code for me. Then I'll make the object of Chrome driver. So I've made a variable driver, which is webdriver.chrome. What is this web driver? This is what I've imported here. Okay, I've imported Selenium import web driver. So we need this driver. Then I need the URL, okay, or the URL that my driver needs to visit. So that URL is saved in this response. So I've just copied this code and pasted it here. And now I'll just remove this entire thing.
Okay, so I just copied this code and pasted it here. Okay, so I've got the secret key and then I'm just calling this get function from my driver to visit this site. So now if I run the code, okay, I'll show you by running the code. So what it will do, it will open the driver and it will visit the site. That is that URL that we generated. So this is the site that we visited. Now the next step is we need the client ID. Okay, there are three things we need to write. First client ID, then a TOTP six digit, then four digit pin. These are the three things we have to uh, write. So let's write a code for that. So how I will do this? So let me first show you what I'll do. I'll run it one more time and I'll show you. I've run the code, then I've visited this site. So here I will, but I'll just run it one more time and I'll show you. So what we need is, you know, from this website, we need is X path. So I'll just click on inspect. After clicking on inspect, I'll just, you know, copy the X path here. I'll just do a right click and I'll just write here, copy X path, you know, copy X path. This is what I will be doing. All right. So this X path we need to send the client ID on this uh, input field. All right. So this is what we need. So that's what I've done. So I've just copied the thing and I've just written the code. Uh, to enter that username into that uh, section. So this is what I've done. I'm using the find element by xpath function. And in that function, I'm just passing the xpath that I just copied. And I'm just sending my key. What are my key? This is this is my username. You know, this is my username. That's what I'm sending. After sending the key, I have to click on that submit button. So this next line is doing that. Okay, so just like I did it for the submit button. Similarly, I have to do for TOTP and four digit pin too. Before moving ahead with TOTP. So I need something that is I need the six digit code that is generated in my uh, mobile phone. So for that, you need to write this piece of code. So I'll just call the TOTP class. And in that I have to send the unique code that I have just copied when I generated when I activated my uh, two-factor authentication and then in that i'm calling the now function so this line of code will generate that six digit uh code for me after that i just need to write a simple code uh, which will just send all the six digit key so this code from line 39 to line 44 will send the six digit uh six digit number to that website and then it will click on the button the blue button uh, to for submitting after doing this i'll sleep for a few seconds then I'll send the next four pin. So these are my four uh, unique pin that I have. So I'll send the four pin and then finally I'll again click on uh, the submit button. Now, one thing that I struggled when I was writing a code is for sending my pi OTP key, I was able to do it by using this find element by XPath function. But for some reason, the same thing was not working for the pin. So I had to use another function that is find element by ID. So I used first find element by ID and then again on that, I called this find element by ID and it worked for me. So you can research it on your own. Okay. How I've done this, you'll also come to the same conclusion after sending everything. Now what I'll get, I'll get the URL. Okay. That google.com then auth code equal to something that is something that, that I've got. Now I just need to get that URL and save it in a video. So that's what I'll do now. I'll, I'm saving the current URL. So this is how you save the current URL. You use driver.current URL. So this will give you the current URL of the driver. And in that URL, I have everything. In the next line, I'll just slice it out. I'll just get the uh, code that I need. Everything else I'll remove. So this is the slicing code that I've written. You can go through it to understand in more detail what exactly I've done here. Finally, I'll quit my driver to stop, uh, to make it stop working. And then at the end, I'll just return the auth code. So this entire function, what this will do first, it will generate the link that the driver needs to visit. Then it will enter my username. It will sleep for a few seconds. It will generate a six digit TOTP. It will send all the six digit TOTP. Then it will click on the submit button. Then it will send the four digit pin. Again, it will click on the submit button and whatever URL I got, I just sliced everything out, whatever important stuff that was necessary for me. I saved it in the variable auth code and at the end, I'm just returning the auth code. So this is what I have done in this entire function. Now I just need to call this function. So I'll save it in a variable auth code and finally I'll just uh, print auth code. Okay. So this is what I've done. I've ju I'm just calling the function and I'm just printing it. Now to run the code, I need to edit 
few thing that is i need that unique code and my four pin so i just edit it right now and I'll then run the code so finally i have updated all the necessary thing i needed the unique qr code uh, for the two factor authentication then i needed the four pin so i have updated everything now if i run the code every, everything will work smoothly so i am running the code first it will go to this website first it will enter my uh, client id then it will enter the six digit totp then finally it will enter uh, the four digit pin the moment is, it is done then you will see that i am finally printing it here so in the console you can see the uh, final access token that i need so let's wait so this is the access token that we needed so this is how we automated our entire process now after doing this much what we need to do we will just save this entire thing in a file so i have got the auth code now i just need to get the access token so i'll go here i'll just copy this line of code which gets me the authentication token copy it and i'll paste it here and i also need this line of code so this will give me the access token now i just need to save it in a file now how i will save it in a file it's pretty simple i'll make a variable a okay i'll just open a file so i can name my file anything like you know access.txt and i want to open it in write mode okay then i will just write a dot write and i just need to write the access token and i'll just write a dot close so these three line of code will open the file write the access code and finally it will close it also and then at the end i'll just print the access token that access token now if i run the code you'll see that once the entire automation is done it is going to make a new file here okay along with making a new file it is also going to print the access token for me so previously what we got was auth code this entire thing was done for auth code and then this piece of code is responsible responsible for getting me the access token all right so let's wait for a few more seconds so finally i've got the access token in access.txt i finally have my access token